Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In your mind, you to the service on today. Give what the Lord has to give to you. Our scripture reading will be found in the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 34, verses 1 through 8. I will read the scripture and then we will go into prayer, believing God to bring us through this day. And it reads. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked into him and were lighted, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear and delivered them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts him. Oh, gracious Father, we're tasting and we're seeing that you are good. And we just want to say thank you for being so good to us, Father. We want to say thank you for waking us up on this morning. Thank you for starting us on our way, in our right minds, with a mind to worship you, a mind to praise you, a mind to expect you. Oh, Father, we invite you in on this morning. We're asking that you just come on in and fill this building. We're asking that you come on in and fill Facebook, Father. We're asking that you have your way with your people, oh God. Have your way on this morning, oh God. We're asking that nobody leave off, the, off these premises the same way that they came off. We're asking that nobody leave off Facebook the same way that they came off. But we're asking that we leave off with more of you and less of ourselves, oh God. We need you on today, oh God. We trust you on today, oh God. And we're just asking that you move, oh God. We're asking that you let your blood cover each and every one of us, Father. We're asking that you go before the word, oh God. We're asking that you make ways, oh God. Open up our ears so we can hear what the Spirit has to say to us on today. Oh God, I'm asking that you bless each and every one that's here, oh God, under the sound of my voice. I'm asking that you bless whoever's bringing forth the word on today. I'm asking that you remember the pastor, oh God. I'm asking that you remember First Lady, oh God, and all of this ministerial staff, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember Zion as a whole. Remember all that we all have up before you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we're just asking that you have your way, Lord. If there's something that I should have said that I didn't, I'm so glad that you sit high and look low. You know everything about each and every one of us. And why we ask that you just have your way with us on this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we invite you in, oh God. We invite you in, oh God. Oh, suck with us, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come on, give God a hand praise.
Praise the Lord, everybody. I really enjoyed this song. My hallelujah, we long to you. Come on, y'all can sing along. My hallelujah, we long to you. Peter 1, I'm going to read verse 18 and 19. Is that all right? Amen. If you have it, say amen. If you don't say, Pastor, wait on me. Amen. Don't let the train leave without me. Chapter number one, verse 18 and 19, it says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversations received by the traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. 
Let's, let's look at that verse 19 again. Amen. I want to look at that little part that says, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. I want to talk to you this morning for the time that is ours together from this thought. I know it was the blood. Come on, somebody. Anybody know that I was of God? It was the blood. Amen. Father, we thank you. We glorify you this morning. God, simply because you woke us up, you deserve the praise. You deserve all the honor. And God, we just ask that you would speak today. Yes, Lord. Move me behind the cross. Allow the people to hear from you, to see you through signs and wonders. Move in this place. Exercise your authority on the earth today, God. Speak a word that will transform somebody's life, that will change somebody's thinking. In the name of Jesus, let your power fall in this place. God will give your name the glory. You deserve it. We'll give you all the hallelujahs for you deserve it. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. You may take your seats. You may be seated. Amen. We give honor where honor is due. We certainly thank God. Hallelujah for all of you pressing your way out this morning. Amen. Our assistant pastor had to work. We're praying that God would just touch him where he is. Amen. Thank God for his lovely wife being with us this morning. All of the elders, Dr. Williams. Amen. Sister Hope. We thank God for Elder Henry Williams and Mother Williams. Amen. They may not be here with us, but we thank God for them. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to give honor where honor is due. We thank God for every deacon. Hallelujah. Every evangelist, every minister. Amen. We thank God. Hallelujah. For our guests that are with us this morning. Amen. We certainly thank God for the First Lady of Zion Church of Jesus Christ. My very lovely wife. Amen. Thank God for Evangelist Nakia Deary, my children. Amen. And all of you, Zion Church of Jesus Christ, give yourselves a hand, family. just acknowledge and uh, give our condolences. We did lose a powerhouse out of the PCA of F in Bishop Michael Ford who has passed on made his transition going to see the king. Amen. And his work go before him. Amen. But we're certainly praying for the PCA of F. And we're praying for uh, First Lady Ford and the family. Yes. Them at Christ yes. Temple Christian Life Center in Louisville, Kentucky. Oh. God bless you. We're praying for you. We're here for you. Along with the rest of the bishops and bishop boards and all the churches of the PCA of F. I know this is a pressing time. Oh. And we're praying for your strength. Amen. Somebody ought to just tell God, thank you. Come on, somebody. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, let us get into the word of God this morning. Amen. I know it was the blood. These are extraordinary times we're living in, troubling times. Paul called them uh, perilous times. 
Amen. And everything about this season that we are involved in uh, deals with challenge. Amen. It's, it's challenging uh, not only uh, relationships and challenging uh, the economy and whew, people losing jobs and people losing homes and people losing loved ones. Come on, somebody. It, it, it's, it's not only challenging that, but it's challenging the very fiber of your faith in God. Because uh, I know I'm going to be transparent this morning. All of us have to have asked the question, where is God? I think it's almost been seven months back in March that we, we preached from this pulpit that God was going to turn this thing around. Come on, somebody. And, and, and that's pretty much, can I just talk this morning? That, that's pretty much what's been coming from the pulpits all around America is to encourage you all to know that God, in spite of the job loss, in spite of losing homes and businesses, and in spite of losing loved ones, God is still in control. He's still in control, and, and, and he's so much in control that, that his word, if you just stand on his word, it should encourage you. Come on, somebody. If, if, if you don't hear a word from the preacher, if you don't get a phone call from your pastor, there ought to be enough word that's in you from studying to show yourself approved under God. Man, be not be ashamed. There ought to be enough word that you read somewhere. Amen. And I'm not talking about just listening to, to videos and Facebook sermons. Listen, I'm talking about getting in the word for yourself and having God open your revel open, give you open revelation of what the word is saying to you in this season. Because everybody, although we see the impact and we see what's going on out there, hallelujah, and even in here, we see what's happening and the devil is just on a rampage. And, and he is destroying people's lives. Amen, somebody. And, 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 and although we're seeing all this that has taken place, there ought to be enough in you to say, if God don't keep us, we won't. Be kept. The Bible says if the if the watchman watch it in vain, then, 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 then the city won't be kept. If the builder builds it in vain, unless God builds the city, uh -huh, unless God watch over the city, then, then everybody else is doing it in vain. Amen. And you ought to just put your hands together right there and thank God that he is watching over you. Uh, come on, somebody. That he's watching over you. When we when we look at this text this morning, it's 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 kind of it's kind of odd. I, I don't want to talk too much about the pandemic. I, I don't want it to be the center of our conversation this morning. Amen. I, I, I want to talk about the victory that you can gain in knowing that it was the blood of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Amen. I, I think we, we, we're giving the pandemic too much advertisement. And, 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 and when we do that, we kind of forget where God has positioned himself. Because if he didn't wake you up this morning, you wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> but because he did, you might as well go ahead and give him a shout. Hey, hallelujah, somebody. You might as well tell him thank you. Hallelujah. So, 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 let's look at this text this morning. Uh, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by the traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish uh -huh, and without spot. Now, the, the only way to conquer sin, and I believe the only way or the only antidote or the only real answer to that, the pandemic is that if my people, 
come on somebody, who will call upon my name, yeah. would humble themselves. See, God has an order, and he likes to do everything decent hey. and in order. And, and he says here, he says uh, over there, in, I believe in Second Chronicles, amen. He says, if my people who are called by, by my name would humble themselves and, and would pray. Prayer is communication. God wants to have a conversation. And, and I just believe that the things that are going on is getting your attention. And God is like the sprint guy that used to be on sprint. Can you hear me now? Now that I've shut down everything. And I put you in a place where you have to depend on me. Yeah. You know what I like about God is that you can lose your job and still, hallelujah, pay all your bills. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> you know what I like about God is that the, the doctor can give you a diagnosis. And God can take that diagnosis. It can be true, proven. That you at stage three, stage four in cancer, and God will come in and wipe it away. Come on, somebody. God, God has a way of making doctors out of believers. Can I get a witness in here? God, 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 God got a way of fixing situations while you rest at night. Ain't no sisters, the song says, ain't no sister worry. <laughs> if you're going to worry, don't pray. If you're going to pray, don't worry. But, but when you lay down at night, when you are a child of God, you ought to be able to rest and rest assured that God can fix the situation. Come on, somebody. I've had enough history with God, and, and, and that's what it takes. It takes knowing God. It, it takes knowing, having a relationship with him to help you to understand that no matter what you're going through right now, it's temporary. Yeah. 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 Oh, Lord, help me right there. Help me right there. It, 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 it's temporary. Why? Because the Bible says these are but a light affliction that only lasts but a moment. That, that means that no matter what I'm going through, what the devil is doing, what my enemies are doing, hallelujah, it's only going to last for a moment. Matter of fact, let me tell you, it's only going to last for a season. And seasons come and they go. Seasons change. I'm going to write about it. And so what we're going through right now, all of the anguish, all of the anxiety, all of the depression, all of the hurt, all of the losses, everything that we are going through right now is temporary. It's temporary. So what I've learned to do, because I understand now that it's temporary, is I learned to celebrate God in the middle of it. I've decided rather to have a pity party is to go ahead and praise him in the midst of it. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Uh, praise is what I do, and I'm not going to let the devil or nobody else or even a demon from hell stop me from giving God the praise no matter what my circumstance. Yes, I was looking for a job before I got that one, and God blessed me with it. And if he did it then, And I feel like preaching like a summertime in here. Come on, somebody. Somebody ought to shout, he can do it again. Come on, somebody. He can, he can do it again. And that's why I don't get bent all out of shape anymore. I, 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 I don't have a pity party anymore. I, I, don't, I don't let people entertain me with negativity anymore. It's because I've got history with God. And I understand, hallelujah, that God opened the Red Sea for the children of Israel. I, 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 I understand that God not only allowed the three Hebrew boys to go in the fire, but he was in the fire with them. I, I understand that not only did he allow Daniel 
to go in the lion's den, but he showed up. God help me right there. He showed up in the lion's den. What you saying, Bobby? I'm saying no matter what you're going through, if you learn how to praise him, because he says, I inhabit the praises of my people, which means that he gets right in the middle of your situation. And as long as you clap in your hands, as long as you tell a God how good he is, he begins to turn your situation. Trump needs to learn this. He'll turn it around. Yes, he will. Somebody ought to shout, yes, he will. Can I get a witness in here? Has he turned it around lately? He'll turn it around. He'll confound your enemies. Come on, somebody. He'll turn it, he'll turn it around. What the devil meant for evil, he'll turn it around. He'll turn it around in your marriage. He'll turn it around on your job. He'll turn it around in your affliction. He'll turn it around. And I don't know about you, but I need to turn around. Well, Pastor, how do you get that turn around? You gotta forget what's going on. Forget those things that are behind you. And press toward the mark of the high calling. You gotta let go of folks. Let go of situations. Let go of crying. You can let it go for a night. But joy's coming in the morning. You gotta let go. And when you let go, God will open up the window in heaven. Somebody said hallelujah. I've learned to let go. Let go and let God. Why? He can, he can handle it better than I ever could. In, in 1 Peter 1 and 18, he says here, for as, for as much as you know, there's some things you just got to know. Let me help you. You have to know that if God brought you to it, he's got the power and the ability to take you through it. Can I get a witness in here? Come on, come on, somebody. You, you, you got to know that no matter what things look like, the one that sits high Help me right there. Hey, hey, you do know he sits high. And when you're high, you can see everything. They tell me the eagle flies high so he can see everything. Mm, he's got that vision. Not 2020 vision, but he got some vision where he can look past stuff and see the prey. God says high. In the year that King Uzzah died, somebody Isaiah said, I saw the Lord. He was high. Train filled the room. In other words, God ain't sitting in the gutter. He comes from high to the gutter and lifts you up out. Yeah. Yeah. The gutter is not God's habitation. He comes to rescue us out of our pity party, out of our state of depression, out of our hurts and pains, out of our affliction, and He lifts us up. Y'all sit down. Y'all gonna make me hurt myself. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he done, the Bible says he redeemed us. He's talking to the children of Israel here. And he, he's letting them know that God redeemed you. What 
what does that mean to be redeemed? But, but what does that really entail to be redeemed? They used to send coupons out from the supermarket. Got any shoppers in here? And, and them coupons really didn't have no value <laughs> unless you put some action to it, took it to the store and used it. And then you would get a discount or even something free from that coupon because it had redeemable value. Can I tell you that as dirty as we are, Disobedient as we are, as guilty as we are, as ignorant as we are. Come on, preacher. The Bible lets us know that we are redeemable in the eyes of God. There's nothing you've done, nothing you can do that God cannot redeem you from. The blood of Jesus, when it was poured out over 2,000 years ago, had redeemable value. In other words, if you got the blood on you, he going to see the blood. <laughs> well, if he see the blood, we already know the story. He's going to watch over you. He's going to pick you up out of the mess that you're in. Oh God, let me slow this thing down. Y'all sit down, sit down. He says, I've redeemed you. He said, I didn't buy you. I didn't purchase you with no money. I didn't trade nothing for you. He said, I died for you. I shed my blood for you. There it is right there. He said, silver and gold? No, that ain't what it did. Silver and gold have I none. You know the story. But such as I have, I'll give unto you in the name of Jesus. Listen, silver and gold cannot buy salvation. Salvation can't be purchased. It can only be purchased by the blood of Jesus. The only thing that can conquer sin, as I am, is to take the eye out the middle. Y'all gonna walk with me in a minute. And put a hole there and make it sun. The Son of God is the only thing that can conquer sin. Can I get a witness in here? Oh, God, help me right there. Let me walk on. Jesus defeated sin. Well, if Jesus defeated sin, why are we still sinning? Why are we still coming up short? Why are we still lying? Bad boy. We the people of God. And Jesus according to the word of God, defeated sin. Yes, well, let me show it to you. I got it right here. It, it, here it is right here. In verse number, I got to go to Colossians. In, in Colossians, it, it, it says it right here. It says in verse number 11, it says, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Verse 12 says, buried with him in baptism. Uh -huh, that's important. Wherein also you are raised with him through the faith of the operation of God. God is operating. God is the one in control. Who had what? Raised him from the dead. And watch this. And you being dead in your sins uh -huh, and the uncircumcision of your flesh has he quickened together with him. Having what? Forgiven you all trespasses. I, 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 it, it would be ministerial 
malpractice for me to walk past that scripture and not say something for you. Listen, listen, it sins past, sins present, and sins future have already been dealt with in the sight of God. You just ain't got the email. You just ain't got the text. Because some people have a hard time, Elder, forgiving themselves for things that they have done. And God has already washed the record clean. God has cast it as far as the east is to the west. And you still sit there reminiscing on how you messed up and how you did this and how you did that. And not understanding that God has already forgiven you. But if God has haven't forgiven you, then you need to get up. Dust yourself off and get back in line. Oh, God, help me right there. You, 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 you're your worst enemy when it comes to being forgiven by God. If God forgave me, then I'm able to get back up and continue in this race. Because the race is not over. Just because you messed up. He says, having forgiven you all trespasses, all, all, A-L-L, -L, all trespasses. 14 here says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us. The only, God help me, the, 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 the only reason a lot of us are not over there in sunset it's because God know you ain't ready to go yet. Because if he was to take that breath from you in the condition that you're in, then you would make him out of a liar. Because he said, all that the Father have given me, none have I lost. In other words, he's got to wake you up, stir you up, help you to get back in line. Oh, God help us right here. He, 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 he says, he says, blot it out. The handwriting of ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, and have spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, triumphantly over them. Oh, God, in it. When Jesus hung, God help me right there. Bled and died on Calvary's cross. He paid the price for your sins. And when you understand that, then you can walk in the newness of life. You can walk without being just middle even to yourself. You can walk and get and not care what other people think about you. Because you know they had no money, they had no power to redeem you. But the one that was able to do it, the Bible says he was led like a lamb to the slaughter. The one that had the ability to do it, he died for you. I don't want to keep you long. I looked at this thing in Colossians 2 and 14, and I looked it in the NIV. It says, having canceled the charge, oh God, our legal indebtment, uh -huh, which stood against us and condemned us, he has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. In the ESV version, by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with his legal demands, he set aside, nailing it to the cross. Oh, God, help me right here. Do you know what Jesus really did? Hallelujah, by dying on Calvary's cross for us who were not worthy of his death. The Bible lets us know he's canceled our debt. He's canceled what we deserve. And he's given us love. He's given us grace. He's given us and shown us mercy. Don't you know the Bible says that if God was to give us what we deserve, there would be none of us sitting in here this morning. We might as well lock the door. Everybody walk out, lock 
to go. But because he's been merciful, because he has grace, because he cares, because he has set his love upon us, yet while we were sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Preach Bobby Wayne. In other words, I wasn't worthy. There's nothing I could do, nothing I could present, nothing I could bring that would redeem me. But he thought enough about me. Raise your hand like this. Don't look at your neighbor. Say he thought enough about me to go to Calvary's cross and to die for my sins. And when you understand that, you ought to give him a praise. Because he didn't do it. Hallelujah. Just for you to sit here and have a pity party. He didn't do it. Just for you to sit here when times got hard for you to give up and run in and run away. He did it so that when times got hard, you can look unto the hills from which cometh my help. And my help, I said my help, my help coming from the Lord. I got it. Oh, come on, say it. Oh, shut up. There's somebody in here. You need to understand something. God loves you. Why do you love yourself? Because, oh, God, help me right there. And when you understand that, then don't look at us like we strays because we lift our heads. Don't look at us like we strays because we do our things. Don't look at us like we strays because we jump, 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 jump. Still, wow. 
Well, I just came to get a car. He said, well, you're going to have to find somebody to co-sign for you. I said, wow. All right. I walked in the dealership the other day. And the man came back. He said, uh, man, you first he text me. He said, come, man, come back in the office. You ain't gonna believe this. He said, uh, I got an amazing proposition for you. I, I, I went in, I said, you said amazing. <laughs> he said, amazing. I said, Ooh, what's amazing about it? He said, we're gonna give you the payment you asked for. Nothing down. <laughs> and all we want you to do is sign right here. And, and you don't have no payments for 90 days. And you got the lowest interest rate we can find. <laughs> okay, let me get back to the spirituals. You can be jacked up in your spirit. I don't care how messed up you are in your spirit. God has a way of restoring you to the point where your enemies got to celebrate what God is doing in your life. I'm talking about the ones that told you you were never going to be nothing. You weren't going to make it. Hallelujah. You, 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 ain't, you, you ain't nobody. Hallelujah. You'll never have nothing. They'll be the main ones that, that God will use to bless you. So I went yesterday after I purchased that car to the mobile home place. Let me see how real God is. <laughs> Let every word be established. Let everything be established by two words. He said, man, we got an amazing deal for you. I didn't buy no mobile home, honey. friends before we believe God. We, we, we rather believe that car dealership salesman before we believe God. But God said, I give you houses you didn't build. And I'm not a prosperity preacher. I'm a believing preacher. He said, I give you vineyards you didn't plant. Come on, somebody. He'll give you things, hallelujah, so that you will stop trying to get them yourself. And forget what you've been called to do. So God takes care, hallelujah, of the vertical as long as you take care of the horizontal and everything will be all right. I didn't buy no mother home, saints. Y-E-T. <laughs> but he said, we got an amazing deal for you. It was the same deal with the car. Nothing down. Come on, somebody. Basically. All right. So, so, so Jesus canceled the record of our debt in the same way a legal pardon cancels 
the penalty for crime. Yeah. In that in that day uh -huh, and time, Paul wrote this uh -huh, to them, trying to explain to them that as a person is arrested or enslaved, his financial debt can be paid off. Amen. The same way with sin. You can be forgiven for what you've done. Now that's not to say man ain't gonna forgive you. Cause man not only ain't gonna forgive you, he ain't gonna forget and he ain't gonna let you forget. But you cannot rely on man when it comes to salvation. Listen, you can't even rely on your pastor. You got to get this thing for yourself. You got to know for yourself that God has purpose in my life and he has called me out of darkness into this marvelous light for a reason. And I am still here. I got blood that's warm running through my veins. Hallelujah, my lungs are still working. My heart is still beating. My mind, I still got a piece of it. Uh-huh, hallelujah. And because, hallelujah, I'm still here and I'm functioning, God got a purpose for my life. And whenever God has a purpose for your life, all he wants you to do, because if you stand still and watch the salvation of the Lord, God will do the work through you. Paul says, he says, that your debt has been paid. A believer no longer lives under the threat or the punishment of sin. It, it's been canceled. I said it's been canceled. Yeah. And so then, what's my problem? Your problem is you forgetting that you have to walk according to the spirit and not the flesh. A believer in Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection was a sufficient enough payment for our sins. But Paul is trying to tell the folks here uh, in Colossians, he's trying to tell them that no matter what you have done, you can be forgiven. Child molest. And I know that sounds bad. It sounds terrible. And it is. But they can be delivered. You have to believe. Can I get a witness out there? Let me close this thing out. <laughs> over in Romans chapter number 3 verse 23 amen the Bible says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God despite what you've done you're not in it by yourself all of us need the mercy all of us need the grace. Yes, All of us need God oh, yeah. to forgive us for something. And if you're here this morning, I don't know. Sometimes the devil will try to tell you that what you've done, God won't forgive you. He'll try to convince you that you're the worst person in the world and the last person that God would forgive. But, but I come this morning to let you know that the blood that Jesus shed two thousand, over 2,000 years ago, that same blood 
still has redeeming power. The songwriter puts it this way, the blood that Jesus shed will never lose its power. If you're here, this way you are, in your seat. Just raise your hand. Right where you are. Come on, raise your hand. Lord, you see the hands of these that have been risen. We need your help, Lord. God, we need your help, Lord. We need you, God. We need you to intervene right now. in your presence. God, we need you help. We need you to come in, oh God, and wash us, purge us, and make us clean again, oh God. Lord, even as you come from Jesus, creating us a clean heart, renewing us the right spirit, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Blot out our transgressions. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We just ask you today, God, that you would touch me. You see who they are. You see what they have need of. Cover their hearts and their minds, Lord. There is Help them to understand that you've forgiven them. In the name of Jesus, wash them. Make them holy again. In Jesus' name, we pray. Even there on Facebook Live, that you can be forgiven, Hallelujah. There is healing. In the name of Jesus, healing. Lord, heal today. Deliver today. Set free today. Turn around somebody around today, God. In the name of Jesus. We'll give your name the praise. And we'll give your name the praise. God bless you.